Next, we will talk about the latest medical technology called Digital Twin. This is a state-of-the-art simulator that accurately reproduces the human heart in a digital space. Not only its shape and movement, but even the internal blood flow is replicated. Last year, the clinical trials were completed, and development is progressing with the goal of practical use. The purpose of this simulator is to treat congenital heart disease, where the structure of the heart is abnormal from birth. It is said to be found in about one in a hundred newborns, and the abnormalities vary greatly between individuals, making it extremely difficult to choose the appropriate surgical method. We covered the front line, where this heart simulator is being actively used. The head of the development team for the simulator is Dr. Isao Shiraishi of the National Cerebral and Cardiovascular Center, who has been engaged in the diagnosis and research of children's heart disease for over 40 years. The development began to address a specific challenge. The issue is that the abnormalities in the heart vary greatly between patients. Normally, the heart is divided into four chambers, but in congenital heart disease, the chambers may not be separated, or there may be holes in the walls separating the chambers. There are over 40 main types of conditions, and multiple abnormalities are often seen at the same time, making it difficult to determine the appropriate surgical method. For example, in surgeries where an artificial blood vessel is sewn into the heart, even a slight difference in thickness can greatly affect the burden on the heart. Therefore, it is necessary to choose the one that best suits each individual, but this decision always comes with risks. In some cases, it can lead to heart failure, and in severe cases, it can be life-threatening. A difference of just 0.5 millimeters can significantly change the blood flow, so selecting the right one with precision is extremely difficult. That's why Dr. Shiraishi, in collaboration with the University of Tokyo, is advancing the development of a simulator that recreates the patient's heart in digital space and predicts post-surgical outcomes. The analysis of data and other tasks involved in the reproduction and prediction are handled by a medical device manufacturer. First, a three-dimensional image is created from CT scans of deep sections of the heart, and this image is divided into over 400,000 small blocks. Each block is animated by a unique program, and additional test data is input to replicate the blood flow, blood pressure, and oxygen levels. With such precise replication, virtual surgeries become possible. The program allows for fine adjustments to the shape of artificial blood vessels and enables various surgical procedures to be tested. A virtual surgery is performed and the computer analyzes how the blood flow and pressure will change. By comparing the results, it can predict which method will place the least burden on the heart. Simulation is software that can predict the future, so I believe it could help envision the future of medicine and create new medical approaches. The simulator is already proving effective in real-world applications. One example is Minato Fukunaga, who was diagnosed with severe congenital heart disease. Well, your blood test results look good, the doctor said. When Minato underwent surgery two years ago, the simulator was used as part of a clinical trial. 
The pediatric cardiac surgeon who performed the operation said, the simulation played a key role in deciding the surgical method. Minato's surgery involved creating an artificial pathway inside the heart for the blood to flow. To create this ideal pathway, part of the muscle had to be removed, which posed a risk of affecting heart function. Since surgery involves cutting, there's always a certain amount of risk. Moreover, determining how much to cut is always a delicate balance. In the simulation, scenarios with and without the muscle removal were compared. The simulation showed that removing the muscle would have little impact on heart function, and the benefits outweighed the risks. Without clear evidence, such treatments cannot be performed, making the simulation an extremely important tool that provides a foundation for surgical decisions. Two years after the surgery, Minato's medication has decreased and his oxygen levels in the blood have improved. Now, as a first grader, he has no restrictions on physical activity. He had the surgery properly and now he's running around full of energy. I'm really glad he's doing well, said his parent. The challenges with the simulator include difficulty in replicating certain heart conditions and the time it takes for analysis, making it unsuitable for emergency surgeries. The development team plans to continue refining it with the goal of making it more practical. Our ultimate goal is for people to live fulfilling lives. We want to create an era where the simulator can be used as a matter of course by everyone. If doctors can decide on a surgical method based on solid evidence, it would provide reassurance for the patients as well. It would be great if it helps reduce their anxiety. As for the simulator, it was used in 12 cases during clinical trials conducted until last year, and it is expected to be approved as a medical device within about three years.